up. Oh, I can't show that one. There's violence in it. That's a shame. Mr. Oldham, come on up, sir. What number is Mr. Oldham? Let's see. What brings you to our court today, Mr. Oldham? Uh, Officer Robert Nien. How are you today? Uh, fine. I'm the beneficiary of the James Oldham. You know you've been here before. Yes, sir. You're always welcome here. Thank you. I, I love being here. You're one of my favorite judges. Am I? <laughs> yes, you are. Well, you said you got me in the, the... Oh, boy. Maybe it's just me, but I can't imagine being in a situation where I go to court enough when not being a lawyer that I have judges that I know well enough to say, You're my favorite. Yikes. Internet. You made me popular on the internet. Is that true or is that somebody else? That's true, true, Your Honor. I, I misjudged you and I should make a correction there. You misjudged me? Yes, I did. Well, I don't know what you judge me, but I think you're a great fella. I think you are too. And um, hey, somebody said, oh, that Mr. Oldham, he thinks you're a star. He made you a star on the internet. I don't know, but um, they said you're going too fast today. Uh, I did get the message from Jake. It was very nice. I'm glad everything's working out for you. That's what it, uh, officer, what's the charge? Tell me, what do you charge against Mr. Oldham today? And how fast, tell me, tell me, <coughs> tell, how do you plead to this charge? Uh, the officer said you were speeding, Mr. Oldham. I, I, I would just ask for the officer if he could say, uh, what proper cause of action he's brought against me if he oh god no if you're asked for if you're guilty or not guilty you can plead guilty not guilty no contest those are your options actually has any standing in this courtroom uh it's my understanding uh by the florida statutes that in order for someone to be brought to court that the plaintiff must right. show some I'm going to give you your chance. You know, I always give you a full chance to be heard, but yes. you know how it works. You have a right to remain silent until they go forward. So we get put the burden on them first. The then capitalism. Uh, Bellstar says, R.I.P. my student loans, also my patients with dumbass co-workers with 100 bits. Congratulations. You finally paid them off, and that's fantastic. They're going to go forward, then I'm going to give you a chance. Uh, gentlemen, you might want to fasten your seatbelt. <laughs> All right, let me see. Um, and uh, you know you're in a friendly court, Mr. Olam. You are welcome here anytime, sir. But justice, you know, doesn't have friends. You don't want to have a judge who rule because of friends, do you? No, but I, I just would like to share. Well, let's hear from the now. officer for it. Then you're going to get a full chance to be heard. Okay. Officer, tell me your name, please. Officer Robert Meehan. You ever met Mr. Oldham uh, uh, on the road before this day? Yes, sir, I have. Okay, tell me what happened, sir. Officer, officer, officer Meehan? Yes, on November 16th at approximately 2 p.m., I was on a stationary radar on San Felipe and near Calderon. I observed a white Chief Horn uh, traveling southbound at high rate speed. Estimated the vehicle was traveling 60 miles an hour in the 40 mile an hour zone. My radar indicated that the vehicle was actually traveling 64 miles. Got the traffic stop uh, at San Felipe and Palomar, where I, uh, the driver was identified as gentleman here uh, by his driver's license. And lastly, I, I stopped at first 64 to 40 mile an hour zone. I issued that citation. Uh, he, was, he was not arguing. Uh, issued him that citation. However, uh, I also advised him that I was not giving him a uh, reduction of speed because I had stopped the vehicle earlier in the day for stealing his tires. So basically the cop says it was a typical traffic traffic stop.
Is it no contest? I did it, but I'm not going to admit I did it. Basically, you are certified to operate the radar. No contest as a as a, a plea basically means I'm not going to admit guilt. However, I recognize that this looks really bad, and there's no way I'm gonna get out of it. So, no contest. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 I trust him. You trust him? You don't want to see the paperwork? No, sir. It's okay. Well, sometimes I make mistakes. I had a case here where I had to throw it out because I had some mistakes with the paperwork. But if you don't want to see it, I'm sure he's. Yeah, I'm sure he's up to snuff. And what was the citation then, officer? You got here, um... 64 and 40, sir. Person you cited, you see that person here today? He's standing next to the girl. All right. Mr. Olam, let's hear you, sir. Uh, first off, uh, officer, do you know how many uh, elements are in proper cause of action? Does he yes or no, sir? He has the right to ask you. Uh, but yet you bring me into this court, and a violation of a statute is not cause in itself. It is. It is. Sorry, let me. Sovereign citizens will often claim that without a direct victim, you cannot be subpoenaed and brought into court. You need a direct cause, as they call it. Um, basically, if I punch someone in the face, that is a direct cause of, like, a crime. I have There's a victim. It is a crime. I hurt someone. I can be brought to court for that. They believe that statutes like, you know, speeding, having a license, having a license plate, a proper registration, all that stuff, because they don't literally see a victim despite the fact that these are all obviously statutes put into place to protect, you know, all of us on the road. Um, they believe that these things, since they don't have a direct victim, are not crimes and therefore they are not legitimate laws. Of course, that's ridiculous. That's not how it works. But that is how they see it. In order to have standing, it's my understanding that all the law books that I've read that you have to show... Uh, that you have been suffered a loss or a damage. Uh, I have here uh, Eversley versus State, 748 SO 2nd, Florida, 1999. Causation consists of two distinctive sub elements before a defendant can be convicted of a crime. The state must prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant's conduct was cause and fact, and two, the legal legal cause of the relevant harm, the but-for test. But for my alleged actions, this injury would not have occurred. And I, I state, where is the injured party? In order for you to have standing, a causation of action is some particular legal right of plaintiff against defendant, together with some definite violation thereof which occasions loss or damage. Uh, Lucky versus McCall. Uh, manufacturing 152 SL second 311 and 314 uh, and Solo versus Mar Martin 452 SL second 625. A party has standing when he or she has a sufficient stake in a justifiable controversy. Uh, Sierra Club versus Morton 405 US 727 731. To establish standing. It must be shown that the party suffered injury in fact, which for which relief is likely to be addressed. Uh, Wharf versus Selden, 422, U.S. 490, uh, page 590 and 501. It may not be abstract, conjectural, or hypothetical. Allen versus Wright, 468, U.S. 737 and 791. He's just quoting a bunch of court cases that he doesn't standing. understand. Wolf versus Shum is standing. Yes, sir. You working now? Uh, I'm 100% I'm, uh, uh, disabled. Better. I was looking for a research assistant. I was thinking maybe I'm... Um, what does 100% disabled mean? 
I spent, spent many hours. Pardon me. I spent many hours down there in that law library, Your Honor. Anything else? Who petitioned our father to have a, a system of, of lower and higher courts and judges. And uh, I'm just, I've been in and out of court, and I, I know you're tired of seeing me, Your Honor, <laughs> but uh, I have started driving reasonably. In fact, I turned my license in because... He actually called it driving and not traveling. That's a new one. Uh, I'm just, I, I figured out that uh, driving is a very expensive privilege. Uh, that's beyond a privilege. Uh, I am under treatment uh, for manic... Uh, um, jaded heathens, I think he might mean for the VA, for the level of disability that you have from being in the military, and 100% disabled means you are unable to do most of all, most to all lines of work. Oh, I didn't know that. It's interesting. Episodes that I've had, and I, I have been... How uh, did you get here today? How did you get here today? Uh, my son. Where is he? Uh, outside. Bring him in. Deputy, bring him in. He's, I don't know where he is. He's, He's not outside in the hallway? No. Okay. Go ahead. And at any rate, the, uh, you know, beside all this, uh, I've tried to bring this up many times about standing, and you're aware of, of what of standing, and you might think, well, traffic court is not the same as a criminal court or even a civil court, but, you know, the rule of law, it, it it has to apply in, in, in any case, you know, I mean, it's serious. I could go to jail for some of the traffic offenses. Uh, and standing is uh, an issue. Now, if you look on there, I have reserved my rights under UCC 1-207, uh, my common law rights, uh, which gives me the ability to go to the Florida statutes and the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and take it out of the UCC. Uh, it's supposed to protect me from entering into uh, hidden clauses and partial contracts. And I have done much research, and I, I know I'm right about this. I mean, the law library is filled. I could go and give you three statutes from every state of the union that talks about what standing is and what it takes for a plaintiff to bring action against me. Uh, all right. Anything else? And if all else fails, as I've told you before, I would love for the state to recognize me as an ambassador of our Heavenly Father. <laughs> uh, what? The Veterans Administration is as much as declared that I am a prophet in 1988. And if you have... This escalated real quick. Okay, so he wants to be deemed a literal ambassador of the Lord, and he's saying that he's been deemed a prophet in 1988? What? looked at the internet, and you have looked at some of my blogs, and I put prophecies regularly on Facebook, and every one of them comes <laughs> past exactly as I write them. Doubt. And... If all else fails, I, I, I would love for the court to just recognize the fact that I am an ambassador of our Heavenly Father and grant me diplomatic immunity. <laughs> ah! No, the court will never, ever, ever make a ruling saying that someone is an ambassador of any religious deity. We have separation of church and states. The state cannot make determinations on the viability or realism of some deity, right? You can't do that. And even if you could, why would they let you say you're an ambassador of the Lord? Like, you can't just claim that and then ask for diplomatic immunity so you can put diplomatic plates on your car and not get pulled over or have tickets. That's not how this works. All else fails. All right, anything else? Have a seat, Mr. Holden. Have a seat, also. <coughs> a minute recess. Gentlemen, I have to go. A minute recess.
Obviously, they'll be back in a few minutes. Thank you, boys. Thank you all very much. <coughs> there is one of the matter, Mr. Oldham. Come on up, sir. Okay, Mr. Oldham, what I'm going to do now is I'm um, having a little trouble with my computer here. Anything else you want to say before? Mr. Oldham, I've considered everything. Anything else you want to say before I wrap it up? Uh, I listened to you about your um, standing issues and all. You've done a lot of good research. Yes, sir. And Don't encourage him, please. I wasn't, uh, I was being truthful when I said you are my favorite judge. Pardon me? I've, I've seen many of these judges here in this courtroom, and you are my favorite judge. I was not. I'm serious about that. Uh, but if you do uh, find me guilty, all, all I would ask is that you wouldn't adjudicate. That's all I would ask. Okay. Well, first of all, I want to tell you that these officers, you see them come here every day? Yes, sir. As you heard and yourself, they are very compassionate people. People go at 60, but they know what the fine is. They know times are so hard on the citizens, and they give a lot of people breaks. And as the officer said, you were not argumentative. You were pretty nice to him, you, you know. And um, let me make a few comments in you. One, um, folks like you are what keep this democracy alive, because... Oh, God, don't encourage this behavior, Judge. I'm not telling you to be mean to him, but you don't have to be like, yes, yes, please continue with this nonsense and waste our time. You do the homework, you do the research, you insist on following the Constitution. That's a remarkable thing. That's a wonderful thing. You need to always question the government. Don't just go along and be afraid. Don't be scared of the government. <coughs> You should question the government, but do it in a reasonable way. If someone's questioning the government because they think they're an ambassador of a deity, no, that's not good. This person needs mental health care. They do not need to be lauded for their strange delusions. The should be scared of the people. The people shouldn't be scared of the government. And that's wonderful that citizens like you challenge the government, you do your homework, you come to court, you get a chance to be heard. You understand that? Yes, sir. So I appreciate everything you do. I appreciate and respect everything. <coughs> but that, when I review a case, I got to review it by the facts. And so based on everything the officer said and everything else, I'm going to have to find you guilty of this charge, okay? Based on the facts only, nothing else. <coughs> Well, I've looked at your record and all, and I'm going to cut you some slack. I'm going to withhold the points. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to withhold the points on you, but you, and you're not driving anymore. No, sir. Don't let his officer see you driving again. They're just squealing the tires to begin with. What's that all about? You were just trying out something? Did you ever serve in the military? Yes, sir. Which good branch? In the United States Army. How long? Uh, I spent seven years, and then I filed as a conscience subjector uh, due to my religious beliefs. And I was granted, uh, took a while, but I was granted 100% uh, disability, serving honorably. Uh huh. And I was retired honorably. Sent out to pasture 25 for filing for my rights under Army Regulation 1AO, and they just were not going to see that either. I'll give you until June 5th to pay, okay? Yes, sir. I'm going to withhold the points, and thank you for everything you do for our country. Thank you, officer. Uh, <sighs> thank you. Have a good day. Mr. Oldham? Yes, sir. I'm going to give you a gift. <coughs> I'll give you a copy of the Constitution. Stay right there. I'll give you a copy of the United States Constitution, okay? Thank you. That's for me. Happy New Year. Thank you. 
I wish you would have considered uh, diplomatic immunity. I have considered least. it. I have considered it. Uh, I delayed me. That's why I went back there. I thought about it a long time. But if I give you diplomatic immunity, I have to give you diplomatic mm -hmm. immunity on everything that you can go about and do as you wish. And I know that's not what you want to do. But I have considered that. Uh, believe me, I didn't take it lightly. Uh, you would know that I, that I have a, a law that I keep that is bound, binds me to a higher law than most people would ever be bound to. And uh, you wouldn't have to worry if you did grant me diplomatic immunity of me. I very much doubt <laughs> that a judge in traffic court, even if they wanted to, could grant someone diplomatic immunity arbitrarily. Uh, taking advantage of that and doing things that... Uh, an ordinary citizen would not do. I, I am bound by a higher law. Uh, God I bless, you. God bless law. you, my friend. Have a good day. Uh, jeez. That's a bad one.